dear future nurses, I will be talking about clinical practice guidelines. So we've touched base on the introductory part of these lessons on the clinical practice guidelines. Now I am discussing clinical practice guidelines as part of the EBP application of nursing informatics. So if you would look at the term EBP, I would like to remind you that the term EBP stands for, okay, EBP class stands for, yes, anybody who can tell me what is EBP? What does EBP mean, dear students? Okay, very good. So it stands for evidence-based practice. No? So what we are trying to make you understand here is what are the things that informatics can do for evidence-based practice? So one of the evidence-based practices that is being done is your clinical practice guidelines. So plus it is informatics actually that empowers your evidence-based practice. Now, let's try to revisit again what is a clinical practice guideline and how does it benefit our patients. So plus when I talk about clinical practice guidelines, they refer to statements that include recommendations intended to optimize patient care. Now, during the time of COVID-19, you have noticed that the, the treatment, the management is yet a question mark. And then months after that class, clinical practice guidelines were released. Those clinical practice guidelines were statements and recommendations that can optimize patient care. Now, there was a drug. Um, I forgot the term of the drug. Mm, there was a drug that was initially experimented for COVID-19, but this drug was found to have cardiac toxic effect. So on the first month plus of the COVID-19, this drug was recommended, no? Okay, let's just say, for example, that was drug A. So plus drug A was recommended to be used in COVID-19. However, by the third month of COVID-19, it was found out that it actually led to cardiac toxic effect or cardiotoxic effect. And for that reason, plus, it was removed from the recommendations. So if you would look at it, when I talk about clinical practice guidelines, they are based on systematic review. Kindly correct that. That is systematic review. Okay? So plus, when I say systematic review, uh -huh. ba, we have different types of research. No? Napakarami ng types of research natin from quantitative, going towards qualitative, sa quanti, napakaraming uri, from experimental, going towards your survey and the like. Now plus, when I talk about systematic review, think of it as of this time as research of researchers. Okay, class, your systematic review, think of it as of this time as research of researchers. Now, anong ibig kong sabihin ng research of researchers? Class, for example, may research A, may research B, may research C, may research D, may research E. Si systematic review class, titingnan yung A, B, C, D, E. Titingnan siya class kung saan sa kanila yung congruent saan po sa kanila yung parang design yung recommendations, saan po sa kanila yung contradictory yung recommendations, at sila po oftentimes sinasabi nila kung anong level of evidence yun. Okay? So alimbawa, ano doon sa sinabi kong drug A, so plus the clinical practice guideline would say drug A, 500 milligrams is recommended for COVID. Tapos karugtong niya nakalagay level of evidence. Okay? Level of evidence. Tapos sabihin letter D. Ibig sabihin, pag level of evidence D siya, mababang evidence. Mababang evidence pa. Few studies pa lang yung conducted. Pero kapag high level of evidence siya, it's just like that the drug is effective in the Philippines. The drug is also effective in the study in Singapore. It's also effective in the study in US. So parang, okay, strong na siya. Highly recommended na siya to be used. Okay? So, it follows a sound, transparent methodology to translate best evidence into clinical practice for improved patient outcomes. So, hindi siya class pwede na haka-haka. Halimbawa, sabihin namin ni Colleen, ay okay, ito po yung meds. Feel ko kasi yan po kasi yung magandang meds para sa kanya. So, hindi siya pa feel-feel. No? It's about class what's the medication that will be effective for that patient. So, again, pag systematic review siya at saka high level of evidence siya, it's just like saying that Janela agreed to this as a researcher. Okay? Relen also agreed to this as a researcher. Tapos si Margaret also agreed to this as a researcher. Okay? Parang, parang yun yung mga findings namin na nag-jive nag no? and agree with one another. Now, they are developed using rigorous 
evidence-based methodology with the strength of evidence for each guideline. So pag sinabi nating rigorous class, no? pag sinabi nating rigorous evidence-based methodology, ano pong ibig sabihin yan, class, is that it follows strict steps. It follows strict steps. Okay? So class, kadalasan, pag nagre-review po ng paper in a systematic review, we do what you refer to as your blind review. Okay? We do what you refer to as your blind review. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng blind review? Pag blind review po, nagre-review ka ng isang research, nagre-review ka ng isang paper, pero hindi nakalagay ang pangalan ng author dyan. Okay? Hindi po nilalagay ang pangalan ng author. And that is for the purpose that you will not be biased with regards to the research that they would be um that they are being evaluated now the research class should be conducted on how to effectively implement clinical practice guidelines and impact the quality measures ito po yung paulit-ulit kong sinasabi that not because research a says it's effective it will be effective now for the entire program okay or not because research a says a certain intervention is effective right away gagawin na natin it undergoes series of steps. It undergoes series of steps before it can be fully implemented. Okay? Yan po yung isipin natin for the clinical practice guidelines. Now, plus, we differentiate your clinical pathway and then your clinical guidelines. If you would visit our reference text, there's actually a whole page there that shows us the difference between the three. So you have plus the term clinical guideline. You also have the term clinical pathway. Tapos may tinatawag tayong practice protocol. Okay? Now class actually, oftentimes, they are used interchangeably. Pagkatapos, kung ano yung term na ginagamit sa organization mo, usually yung organization natin yung nag-define. But Kumar here in 2020 helped us differentiate what is a guideline, what is a pathway, and what is a protocol. I urge you to review the entire table that is found in our reference text. Now, for the purpose of this discussion class, a clinical guideline is applicable in specific clinical circumstances. Okay? Specific clinical circumstances. Halimbawa, sinabing dengue with hemorrhage. That's a clinical circumstance. Dengue without hemorrhage. That's a clinical circumstance. Halimbawa, sasabihin normal spontaneous vaginal delivery Kay normal spontaneous vaginal delivery, uncomplicated. That is a specific clinical circumstance. Pero yung clinical pathway, dear students, is focused on the quality and coordination of care. Paano po siya nag-focus sa quality and coordination of care? Yung tinitingnan po sa clinical pathway is that whether nag-jive or whether congruent yung management na ginagawa in contrast sa guidelines. Okay? Kung baga class may guidelines eh, Pag pathway yung pinag-uusapan, si path, uh, ito yung guideline, si pathway katabi niya. Tapos titingnan whether it's done, it's not done. Okay? That's your pathway. And then class, it allows you to check the quality, whether the quality is effective or not. Whether the quality is met, okay? or whether the evaluation is met or not. Pag sinabi naman natin practice protocol, it usually refers to treatment. So halimbawa, sasabihin, this is our protocol for cancer. Pag sinabi ko class na protocol for cancer, let's say protocol for ovarian cancer in your MCN. Class, may combination of drugs yan. So halimbawa nakalagay, first perform surgery, then perform chemotherapy. For the chemotherapy, this is the number of times that chemotherapy will be performed. This is the medications that will be used. Okay? Yan yung tinasabing protocol. Okay? So pag sinabing protocol, it's the set of steps, it's the set of guide to manage a certain condition. That's why it's placed there as treatment. Okay? So what is it? A clinical guideline class is developed statements. Tapos sabi systematically. So pag sinabi natin class na systematically, ibig sabihin, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, it follows steps. It follows steps to assist practitioner to make decisions about healthcare. Class, usually, yung pinag-uusapan po natin sa clinical guideline are the medical practitioners. So I am referring here to our physicians. Okay, the focal point of this one is our physicians. So it allows us, it allows us to guide the physicians 
on what's the best decision to make. Okay? Plus, if you are learning medicine, you will know that hindi po po pwede na hula-hula na lang kung anong antibiotic. Hindi po pwede na hula-hula lang kung anong gamot yung ibibigay sa pasyente. It's actually established by guidelines. And that is your clinical guideline. Now, if you would look at clinical pathway, it says they're multidisciplinary. Pag sinabi ko class multidisciplinary, ano yung mga disciplines involved? What do you think are the disciplines involved? Why is it referred to as multidisciplinary? Anybody? Sige na, bakit siyang tinawag na multidisciplinary? Can I see on chat if uh, what do we mean by multidisciplinary? Yes? Sige na class, when I say multidisciplinary, who are the professions involved here? I would want to see your responses. What do we mean by multidisciplinary? Sino profession po ang involved dito? Anybody? Yes, Juliana. Sino kasabay ng nurses dito when we are doing your multidisciplinary? Yes, physicians are included. Sino pa? Doctors. Yes, Justin. Doctors are included. Doctors, sir. Yes, doctors. How about you, Justin? Healthcare professionals, sir. Healthcare professionals? Sino social mga healthcare workers, professionals? Sir. Yes, social worker. Medyo, medyo minimal yung participation ni social workers sa pathway. Pero sino pa? Sino pa yung mga healthcare professionals that touches our patient? Yes, Jurgens or Henrik? Yes, dietitian. I can see that. Very good. Radiologist. That's a good input. Yes. <laughs> Medical technologist, sir. Medical technologist. So, class, yun yun. Pag sinabi ko clinical pathway, lahat na may kinalaman, lahat na nagtatouch kay patient, nakikita yung entire pathway. So, alam nila kung, oy, ako bilang medtech, have I done my part? Ako bilang pharmacist, have I done my part? That's the purpose of your clinical pathway. And if you would look at class a practice protocol, it is a suggested course of treatment for a specific diagnosis. Functional deficit or problem area. Ito po yung sinasabi ko earlier na halimbawa dun sa cancer. Okay, so di ba specific siya for cancer, specific siya for that diagnosis. Okay, now, um, if we would like to have the main differentiation enough, plus isa sa mga EBP na napag-usapan natin is computerized NCT. Pagkatapos class, meron din tayong tinatawag na clinical guidelines. Plus, ito pong dalawang to, okay, ito pong dalawang to are actually included in what we refer to as clinical pathway. Nang dyan po sila sa tinatawag natin na clinical pathway. Okay? So, kumbaga, computerized MCP and clinical guidelines are actually part of what we refer to as your clinical pathway. Paano siya naging part? Kasi nga, it promotes multidisciplinary collaboration and coordination of patient's care. Okay? Now, pagtitingnan natin, okay, let's go towards your e-journals. Your e-journals class is the next trend that we are encountering in evidence-based practice. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng e-journals? Plus, tulad po nang sabi natin, electronic siya. Okay, electronic journals. So, kung nakikita nyo dati-rati, di ba, the tendency is that may hard copy ka talaga ng journals. And then from the hard copy, you will be reading, you will be looking for your researches. Now, plus, ang tendency ngayon, yung frequent na natin ginagamit is what we refer to as your e-journals. So, class, sa e-journals, they are publications that could be found in the web. They are also bibliographic database. Pag sinabi ko class na bibliographic database, usually that includes the title, that includes the name of the authors, that also includes the abstract of the study. So they are bibliographic databases and repository of academic journal in different disciplines. Kung baga, think of your Google Scholar, okay? think of your ProQuest, think of other journals that could be found in the web. Plus yan po yung e-journal. Kung nakikita nyo iba't ibang discipline, 
And we are using that actually in the review of our related literature and also for evidence-based practice. Diba? You have conducted the research. And if you can recall in research, once you have identified the problem, the next step plus that you will be doing is the review of literature. Okay? So plus sa review of literature natin, dyan po natin makikita at define yung isang problem natin. And that is one purpose or benefit of your journals. Okay? Nakakatulong siya para na hindi na tayo kailangan maghanap kung saan-saan pa and data is easily accessible to us. Okay? But please take note, one common problem na nakikita natin sa paggamit ng e-journals is that hindi po sila sinasite properly. Okay? So please take note that there should still be proper citation. Okay, of the authors there. Alam nyo, nung tendency, nagka-copy-paste yung mga authors. So, copy-paste po is not aligned to the ethics that are being taught to us. So, if you would want that um, to address that, you need to have proper citations of the journals that you can find in the web. Okay? Sige. Thank you very much for listening to that discussion.